introduce A couple us. of guests. Yes, introducing our, our guest today, uh, Dr. Jonathan Tripp, and he's brought along uh, somebody to talk a little bit about oral health today. Uh, is it, it, it Dr. Harding, right? No, not Dr. Cindy Harding. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll go along with that. Uh, <laughs> And uh, and I've got to figure out that your microphone is uh, over there. It's a it's it's drooping a little bit. So I want to I'm going to turn that up a little bit for you. Uh, oh, it works fine. <laughs> but the two of you are here today because you're talking about how you know I'm reminded of an old episode of The Simpsons where there was a saxophone player named Bleeding Gums Murphy, and the the joke was that he he didn't brush his teeth a lot and because of that he had issues with his gums and that caused serious health issues and he ended up hospitalized it's no joke though because there's some some reality in all of this when something like that happens with people yep we're going to talk today about the connection between well the the title of our discussion today is is my mouth making me sick and uh, so we're going to talk about the connection between oral health and what is called systemic health or systemic means the whole body and a lot of times we try to separate the two and say, well, you know, I got uh, uh, I got bad teeth or bad gums or something like that. I got a, a tooth abscess, but the rest of me is fine. And the truth is, is we're finding out there's a lot of connection between what's going on in your mouth and what's going on in the rest of your body. And uh, I want to introduce, Cindy is, uh, oh, I don't have her, your official title, but she's like the head honcho of the uh, dental hygiene program at CSI. What's what's the real title? Just the director of dental hygiene. There you go. Yes. Head and head honcho. honcho works well, too. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. <laughs> and I can do that in two languages. They just call you the jefe. That's the, that's the big dog in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, we first had a discussion earlier this morning about how we don't want to freak everybody out about, oh, you know, I can't touch anybody, can't kiss anybody because there's all these terrible uh, microbes and bacteria going around in my mouth. On the other hand, there are lots of instances that we know medically that, you know, the mouth isn't such a great place. Uh, I'll give you, for instance, when I was in my training, we learned that, you know, it's better to get a dog bite than it is a human bite almost all the time. And that just uh, lends evidence to the bacteria in the human mouth sometimes is terrible stuff. You know, if you can rank them, cat bite is the worst. Almost 90% of the time you're going to be infected. Dog bite is about 10 to 20% of the time. And a human is somewhere in between. So I never understood that until I went to medical school. That, you know, the human mouth is not as friendly as a dog's mouth. So I'm not suggesting everybody kiss your dog. But at the same time, it tells you, hey, you know, that's not so great. On the other hand, a study that came out of Denmark about nine months ago talked about parents that would uh, either, it's all about pacifiers. They were linking chronic seasonal or chronic allergies in children to this use of pacifiers, whether the parents would uh, clean it every time, whether they would, uh, you know, stick it right back in the kid's mouth when it fell out, or whether they put it in their own mouth first and put it in the kid's mouth. And the last group where they put it in their own mouth and then in the kid's mouth, they found that their, uh, their propensity to have allergies long term went way down. So there are some benefits of sharing the, the oral flora or the, the microbes that are, that are good ones. And we know in our intestines that there are good and bad bacteria. Uh, and uh, that's part of the worry about using chronic antibiotics is you kill good and bad, and then the bad can take over. So a lot of people know about what are called probiotics now or the live culture bacteria that's in yogurt or other uh, supplements that help replace good bacteria, good microbes. So the mouth is a, is a complex mix of these good and bad. And so uh, having kind of brought that up, I want to turn to Cindy and say, hey, what are some of these systemic or whole body illnesses that we have links to uh, uh, oral disease? Well, and I appreciate that you have delineated between that that's really um, good for our health and those microbes that are very harmful to, you know, in resisting injury. So the gingivitis that you referred to with the cartoon character and dental decay where we have lesions on our teeth that have not been treated, that's what we're going to be talking about is those microbes that can be so injurious. And our mouth is like the worst Petri dish um, out there. It's warm, it's dark, and without care, it, we can develop these microbes that can really manifest um, some injuries and inflammation. 
So that's where we find this link has come in. There's some inflammatory markers. And one of those that, uh, that has been talked about by the American Heart Association is a link between cardiovascular disease and um, these microbes. So you're saying clogged arteries uh, are connected to having bad oral health? No, the microbes that are on the valves that they're finding are connected. So there's other causative problems that lead toward heart disease, but to reduce the inflammation is the, one of the evidence-based areas that they're looking at and linking. So the, the literature, as they say, is not absolutely um, linked, but heart disease has been connected to patients that have periodontal disease, really hold, inflamed. Hold those patients. thoughts. We've got more coming up. Uh, talking about dental health this morning on Better Health with Trip Family Medicine right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 840 63. Our guests uh, are joining us in studio this morning and they're talking about Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. We should point that out. That's the, the name of the segment uh, during the course of the program today. Uh, they're, they're sharing with us, though, some stories about uh, how really the health of your mouth is related to so many other. If you take a systemic approach to it, uh, your overall health. Uh, you're listening, by the way, to News Radio 1310 KLIX at newsradio1310.com. This is Top Story with Bill Colley. And uh, the doctor has brought along a, a friend today as well. We've been calling her the uh, the head honcho, but she's she's running a dental a program at uh, College of Southern Idaho, Cindy Harding. And we'd like to welcome you here. My sister's first name, by the way, too, I should point out. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's, it's Harding, right? Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Actually, her best friend across the street for years uh, was a nurse, and her last name was Harding as there well. There you go. So, so, you so the two of them were inseparable. Uh, but we'd like to, and Dr. Jonathan Tripp, of course, is joining us again this week. Uh, we'd like to actually ask how people, if they wanted to get in touch with your office doctor, how you'd recommend they go about doing that. Yeah, the easiest way is our uh, telephone number is 208-933-4400. That's 933-4400. And then we, you can also contact us on Facebook at Trip Family Medicine, as well as our website, tripfamilymedicine.com, and welcome your comments or questions on any of that. So. And if you've got a question or comment, of course, for our guests uh, during this half hour, feel free to give us a telephone call. Uh, that number is 736-0300, 736-0300. And, of course, uh, they'll, they, in fact, the doctor has generally been very good about, of course, answering your questions, too, as well, or pointing you in the right direction if you have a particular need. Uh, we were just getting through some of the details on uh, on oral health with the mouth and, and how a lot of it's related to just bacteria and things like that. Uh, I know you had quite a bit, too, as well, Cindy, that you wanted to get through this morning before we wrapped up today as well. We initially were talking about uh, the connection between oral disease and uh, heart disease. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying to distinguish, is it really the oral disease that's clogging your arteries? And the answer is not necessarily, but the same bacteria being found in oral disease is being found in coronary arteries, you know, when they're getting in and doing... Uh, cultures uh, when someone has a bypass surgery. So it, it contributes. We don't have the details, but this is not brand new information. In my uh, training, which is now about 13 years ago at Henry Ford Hospital, they were a leader in connecting a certain bacteria called chlamydia uh, from the mouth to the heart tissue as well as to the arteries. And uh, there was some hope at that point that just a simple treatment with oral antibiotics might take care of things. I don't think that's really uh, panned out as the way to treat it, but it definitely made a link between heart disease, inflammation, and this oral uh, bacteria. So that, that was my beginning uh, uh, experience with uh, being introduced to the connection between oral and systemic health problems. So I'm going to turn back to Cindy because there's more. Well, I think our discussion as we moved into more of these complex pathogens was on those things like periodontitis, gingivitis, and dental decay. And these have an indirect, or what they're showing, kind of an indirect link. But there's compelling evidence that this link can, this inflammatory burden that's carried in the mouth can be changed. And so it's definitely something that hygienists and dentists should discuss with their patients. And the message is that this link with periodontal disease and cardiovascular disease um, should, sh should be treated. So patient, 
patients or as uh, individuals, we should be looking to our dentists for guidance on how to reduce that pathogen load or help reduce the inflammation in the mouth and through, through treatment plans in our offices. Dentists are, I guess, then much more likely to refer someone to their other doctor uh, when they see something, perhaps, when they're doing the work in the mouth. Um, you mean to the medical doctor? I think they would rather collaborate and work hand in hand. It's, um, I, I was able to work on many uh, patients that have been diagnosed with some cardiovascular issues, and they also have been diagnosed with periodontitis, and so they were referred to the dentist to have that infl inflammatory work done. So we would treatment plan and uh, do what we call scaling and root planing. Sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's part of the construction going on at my house right now. That's right. Yeah. There's a lot of roots being dug up, and I don't, I'm not sure about the roots scaling. But... <laughs> <laughs> so we want to reduce that pathogen load when we, when we are um, cleaning in the mouth. And it, again, elevates the immune system and uh, reduces inflammation. And uh, many of our patients then... Uh, are able, many of our cardi cardiologists that are concerned with the heart are, of course, concerned with periodontitis. Excellent. And, you know, uh, there's one other big, well-linked disease that uh, people probably aren't aware of, and that is the connection between poor oral hygiene and the increased incidence of diabetes. We know that the two are linked. We can't say, well, this bacteria causes diabetes, but we know that if you have bad teeth, bad gums, you're much more likely to get diabetes than the person who has good teeth, good gums. And so any, any input you have on that? Well, in our type 1 and type 2 diabetes, we see greater gingivitis. We see a, a greater amount of periodontitis. And this is a prevalence that is observed across the board. So maybe it goes both ways. Maybe that someone that's diabetic has a greater chance of periodontal disease. Well, and we know that healing is more difficult. All of these things are linked. So um, for a person older than the age of 40 who has diabetes, periodontal disease is more severe. And healing or trying to, um, uh, with those patients as we try to help them heal, we're going to have a more difficult time because of this destruction to these microbes. Wow. But the link is a strong course of trying to rid with these pathogens. We do utilize um, all sorts of wrenches to reduce the microbial load in hopes to reduce the infl inflammation. So, so give me an, an example. What kind of rinse would we use? Like if somebody, uh, just hearing what we're talking about today, said, you know, I want to kind of clean up my mouth after we talk about this. Brushing your teeth, obviously. Flossing. What kind of rinse would you have them use? You know, I hate to just do a recommendation without seeing a patient's mouth. Oh, okay. So the treatment plan should go to your dentist and your hygienist. Treatment plan these things. They, we have levels of uh, uh, antimicrobial agents that are very safe to use but are based upon um, the severity of the inflammation. But should somebody in general use like an anti-placking mouth rinse, oral rinse, you know, over the counter, just as part of their general health ma uh, mouth maintenance. It's excellent. The brushing and the flossings, of course, ideal. Little toothpicks that we recommend, uh, but the rinses, over the counter rinses, are effective. But for severe periodontal disease or severe gingivitis, we may want to move to something that's more prescription strength. Excellent. No, I, I'm always nice. reminded of those commercials when I was a kid about people, you know, taking the scope or the Listerine. And I remember thinking at the time, well, this can't really be that big a deal. But to some degree, it does clean up some of the mess, right? I mean, it may not be perfect, but uh, apparently it wasn't all just a bunch, uh, a bunch of hokum when I was hearing that as a kid. Not just a sales pitch. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's excellent. It is, it's important to have good oral health care habits good healthy eating habits, many of our links between diabetes, obesity, periodontal health impact our systemic health, our full body health. Well, so, this, this sounds very primary care-ish. 
In other words, when we start talking about taking care of your mouth and how that helps impact your health in general, uh, we talked about these inflammatory markers. I'll throw out a couple that are lab tests that I do. There's one called a sedimentation rate or a C-reactive protein. Uh, there's also your white blood cell count that goes up. These are all ways on blood tests that I can look at a person and say, is there inflammation somewhere going on? And these will tend to go up with periodontal disease. But the question is, is it the mouth? Is it somewhere else in the body? So that's, they're not specific. But we know if these markers stay high, you're more inclined to heart disease, more inclined to diabetes, and other, uh, you're more susceptible. It's almost like your immune system has been depressed, so you're more susceptible to other diseases. So those, those markers are important, but how do you get them to go down? Sometimes it's a mystery, but a lot of times if you can identify where there's chronic infection or inflammation, like periodontal disease, and you treat that. All of this goes down, your risks go down, and your health in general improves. So when we talk about healthy diet, exercise, brushing your teeth, you know, all of these are general, basic, primary care, things that we try to hit, even from newborn, well child checks on up. Why? Because the long-term ramification is you live better, you live healthier, you're less inclined to these more serious diseases that kill people. So that's why I say this is very primary care-ish. I want to just quickly mention before we move on, it's uh, coming up on 854, 64 at our studios. This is Better Health, of course, with Trip Family Medicine on News Radio 1310 KLIX and uh, News Radio 1310.com. Dr. Jonathan Tripp and uh, Cindy Harding joining us in the, uh, the studio this morning. And they're talking about uh, dental health uh, and how that can have an impact on the real system, your entire system over, of overall health. Excellent. There's... The, uh, I had another thought as we were uh, discussing before the show. When we talk about inflammation, because that's really the bottom line is the microbes cause inflammation. And so this is not something that I can say I've read in a lot of journals, but in general, if you have some underlying inflammation, let's give the example, you catch a cold. You get inflammation in the back of your throat, you get it in, you know, the nose, you get the runny nose, the watery eyes, all that going on. And usually that comes and goes, your body fights off the virus, the inflammation goes down, your cough goes away, everybody's happy. But frequently, that inflammation then begets a sinus infection or an earache. And it's because the tubes that come from the ear, called the eustachian tube, are directly connected in the back of your throat. So if there's inflammation in the throat or the back of the nose, those get inflamed, or the sinuses that are draining into the nose, they get inflamed and those passages kind of close off. And now they become a great incubator for whatever else is around, a bacteria, and you get a true sinus infection. So that's a quick example that people can understand to say, a little inflammation can go a long ways into causing other trouble. And I think that's really the connection we're trying to draw here is it's worth taking the time to get good oral health, to get the consultation from your dentist, especially if you have any issues um, and to avoid things like tobacco and alcohol, even though, you know, these are favorite vices that we have. Uh, you know, another statistic I can throw out is head and neck cancer. So whether it's in your mouth, your throat, you know, in your brain, 95% of most soft tissue, of, uh, soft tissue cancers are from people that both drink and use tobacco. And that's amazing because... If you could wipe out 95% of a certain type of cancer just by simply avoiding a couple of things, that's pretty worthwhile. Soda pop, too, because of the acidity, I think, probably has an impact, too, as well, right? Our high sugar and our high um, erosive drinks, you know, that we have, like our Red Bulls and our, um, all your, all your, our uh, Gatorades even, have a very acidic nature to them. And so this erosive nature, of course, will lead to dental decay. And of course, dental decay, the lesion itself has a microbe in it, a pathogen that we're talking about that is very inflammatory. And it is an infectious disease. Caregivers with decay pass the pathogen to their children when they're tasting food or kissing. Of course, we're talking about open lesions. We're not talking about um, just our normal microbes. Like uh, Dr. Tripp said, we have the good and the bad there. So if we have open lesions, um, periodontal disease that has not been treated, this is an infectious disease. We, we can um, give that to our 
little children too, and those we care for. I was going to say most people would be surprised to learn that. Yeah, no, I, we're not trying to stop the world from kissing. No. But, uh, you know, <laughs> would, wouldn't hurt to make sure that that uh, rotten tooth gets taken care of along the way as well. Exactly. The diagnosis and treatment of decay is imperative to a chil child's health and to a mother's health. We have to wrap up. Uh, I'd like to thank you both for coming by today. Uh, Better Health with Trip Family Medicine. Very quickly, uh, doctor, could you give the contact information at your office again? I sure can. It's uh, telephone number is 933-4400. Our uh, website is tripfamilymedicine.com. Our Facebook is Trip Family Medicine. So if you hear a theme there, they're all the same kind of. And uh, next week, we're going to be talking about uh, why to choose a family or a small family office, what are the advantages of of uh, big corporate medicine versus uh, not so big corporate medicine. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun with that. Got more details coming up on that. I'll be mentioning that through the course of the week uh, going into next Wednesday. And Cindy, we'd also like to thank you for coming by today. Thank you. And uh, got another hour coming up of the program. And do want to mention, though, first Fox News at 9 o'clock. This is Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com.